it's somewhere else, that sort of thing. And of course, we have, we have undo. In the preview window here, you'll notice that there's a couple of buttons. We've got a standard trans controls to allow you to play and fast forward and frame forward and frame back. But we also have a full screen mode. I won't go into full screen mode because this uh, it basically I might knock off uh, go to me. But the full screen mode basically gives you a high def version of that. One of the other areas that's very, very handy within Video Studio is that because, as I mentioned earlier, people work in high definition. And so nowadays, for instance, if you have a new camera, uh, every camera uh, almost nowadays shoots in either 1080p or any of the Olympus or Canon ca uh, steel cameras, as well as the digital SLR cameras. For instance, the uh, Canon T2i has got 1080p video, 30 frames per second. Now, some computers, and I know that everybody doesn't buy a new computer every month, some computers that are a little bit more uh, don't have a form of, of the uh, acceleration. We have a function within the Video Studio called Smart Proxy. Now, Smart Proxy uh, allows you to basically have a proxy of your video production. So say, for instance, you bought a brand new camera, it's 1080p, but you don't have a super uh, top-notch notebook at home. Your, your computer is uh, you know, marginal when it comes to video editing. What you can do is turn on Smart Proxy, and what will happen is, is that all your high-definition uh, footage and all your templates and everything will have lower resolution proxy formats in the timeline. As you're editing, it becomes very, very fluid because you're working in a lower resolution. You can't really see that when you're editing. Everything sort of looks fine and feels very, very fluid. When you go to output, it will use the original high def or the original footage that you had and conform all your effects to that original footage depending on your output. So for instance, if you're going to Blu-ray, uh, it would basically conform everything to the high def spec for Blu-ray. If you're going to standard def DVDs, it would conform everything, the original footage, to the DVD standard definition format. So it's very, very handy of using Smart Proxy. So just a tip for those of you who have a Video Studio now and, and the computer is not that uh, high performance, I'd recommend that uh, you turn Smart Proxy on and you'll see a world of difference when you go do your video editing. And the advantage of that too is that a lot of people will want to edit on notebooks and notebooks are very, very uh, uh, popular nowadays. A lot of people are opting to buy notebooks instead of desktops and this really helps uh, in terms of uh, editing on a notebook. So back to titles. So we've got these titles happening here. Some of the things you can do on our titles, if I wanted to start a title from scratch, you can add effects to our titles. So let me go in here, and just in my titling time, timeline here at the bottom, I can double click on this timeline in the title, title area, and in the preview window it says double click here to add a title. So let me just add a title. It will take the most recent uh, title par parameters from these, for instance here, the, the font and the color, and allow me to place that anywhere on screen. But what I can do too is I can go in here and I can scale it, I can rotate it if I like. You can see the shadow moving along there as well. Let me pick the wrong one, but I can move the shadow around. I can rotate it using the rotate handle. Move that there. And I can add things, for instance, uh, like animation. I can have it fading in, fading out, so on and so forth. On this title, what I want to do is add effects. So now with Video Studio, you can add effects to your titles. So let's go to some of our real-time effects here. And you'll get, a, get an idea of some of the ones we have. For instance, Ripple. That's, that's a very uh, uh, a neat effect, especially on vacation videos that take a setting uh, around water. Let me just drop that onto my title. You'll notice here then, as I go through here, in real time, because we're using the graphics processor, in, the, in this computer I have an NVIDIA uh, graphics processor, it basically does this ripple effect on my title. And we can also add multiple effects to a single title. So for instance, there's a title, uh, uh, there's a box here for effects. I can just keep adding effects, adding effects on top of each other. But let's just stick with this ripple effect here. If I go to customize, by default ripple will have some settings that uh, you saw there happening. It'll, it'll stay uh, on and then it'll ripple, ripple, ripple and then stay, come back off again. But you can customize the way that happens and when it happens. So if I hit customize filter, there's my, uh, my title. On the left side is the original. On the right side will be the result. Down on the bottom here, we have a very simple little timeline that if I scroll through this timeline, you'll notice all these type, this, this, uh, this effect happening on this title. So let's say I want to change this a bit. 
every effect has its own parameters. In this case here, for instance, we have on the ripple, we have the center, x and y. So the x and y refers to the center of the, of the ripple effect. The amplitude of the ripples, the frequency, how often they hap happen, and the phase of each ripple. So if I go in here, I can scroll through here, and you'll notice that it really goes crazy. And the last keyframe that I have here has the center being in the same spot, but the frequency went way up. You'll notice that if I scroll here, the frequency sliders and the phase sliders are moving at the same time. So let's change that. Let's go in here and say, for instance, at the end, I want to have no effect. So I'll go back, back to here, knock this all back down to nothing. So now I have no effect. Okay. I could just as easily, on the keyframes, these little uh, diamonds here are called keyframes, I can just, just as easily right-click on a keyframe, like on this first one, and I'll say copy that keyframe, or I can say copy and paste to all. So all the keyframes that are there, it will take this effect and copy and paste them to all. So now everything's the same. In the middle of the title, let's add a little swirl here. To add a swirl and add a keyframe, I would just go in here, position my cursor wherever I want it to be. So in this case here, I have it at one second, 14 frames. I will go to the plus sign, click on plus, it added a keyframe. Then I can go in here and add my effect. So for instance, I'll do amplitude. Not too crazy, don't want to do too insane on this. And I will also change the, the, the center of my effect. So I'll go over here and I can position that wherever I like. So let's say I start it up in this area here. and say OK. So now we have that effect happening right there. So let's go into another capability here. And one, uh, I think a couple of people have pinged us if we could show some effects in, in terms of uh, the new blue side. So let me just go into one of these effects here. So for instance, this uh, effect of the girl in the car with the, with the slideshow, if I right click on this, on this particular component, I can grab it and I can say copy. And let me just put that right here. You'll notice that it copied the whole effect onto the timeline. This effect here is from New Blue. And New Blue is something that we bundle with in Video Studio that allows you to do a lot of really neat uh, DVE effects uh, happening on the timeline. So in this case here, I'll double click. And you'll notice in the, in the, in the attributes side, just go here. You'll notice that it says picture and picture in the filters. If I customize this filter, here's the new blue dialog. If I scroll through here, you can see that, that the adjustments within new blue allow you to go to different areas. And here it has a keyframe that sort of holds it in that position, and then it takes off. What I can do is add keyframes in new blue in all kinds of different places. There are a number of presets within the bottom here. So if I go in here and pick, for instance, doormat, it will animate between that doormat. And there's adjustments of all kinds up here as well. OK, so there we have that. And I'll say OK. And on this clip here, I want to sort of make it a little bit longer. And we'll put that there. And I want to put video into this. So let me go up to my video area and show all of my video. And let's just grab a, a clip here that we can use. I'll just take this clip here, it's a beach clip, and I'll drag that down here. And the same sort of thing, if I hit hold down control, I have replace clip. So in this case here, I'll just play, and you'll notice that the title's going, and the, the ocean's coming in with the waves, and the new blue effect is happening, and that sort of thing. And you can see everything's happening pretty generally in real time. I think on, uh, on the web, uh, the GoToMeeting might not be as, as quick. But you can see how that works with video as well. And let me just look over at my chat here to see what uh, other questions. OK. So if you go into look at the titles again, on this title here, for instance, let's, let's, let's do a, a fade in and fade out of this title. So on the title itself, if I double click on this title, you'll notice the title dialog comes up again. So you can change all the parameters of your title. I showed you colors and, and, uh, and, and font and that sort of thing. 